Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss this theorem. Okay. So what we have, we have two matrix D1 and D2. The given information is both are equivalent matrix. This is a given thing. And we have to prove that these two statements are equivalent. If sequence Xn converges to P in X D1, if and only if Xn converges to P in X D2. Okay. So let us start with the given information. We have, we have D1 and D2 are equivalent matrix. These are equivalent matrix on X. So this is the given information. Let us recall the definition of equivalent matrix. When we say two matrix are equivalent, suppose this is a matrix space XD. If you have any D1 open ball, you will find some D2 open ball which lies inside it. And if you have any D2 open ball, then there is D1 open ball inside it. Okay. D1 open ball means open ball in a matrix space X D1 and D2 open ball means open ball in a matrix space X D2. Right. It means every D1 open ball contains uh, D2 open ball and every D2 open ball contains D1 open ball. Okay. So this is a given information and we have to prove these two statements are uh, see equivalent if and only if part is there that means we will assume one part we will prove the second part and after that we will prove the converse part also. So let us assume the first thing assume that I am going to assume that xn converges to p in x d1 and what we have to prove we have to prove that sequence converges to same point in matrix space x d2. Okay, so this thing we have to prove and after that we have to prove in a reverse way. After that we will assume Xn converges to P in X D2 and we will prove that Xn converges to P in X D1. So let us talk about this part first. So convergent sequence, so we are familiar with the definition of convergent sequence. Epsilon is used in the definition of convergent sequence. So let us take one epsilon first. Let epsilon greater than 0 be given. See, uh, this is a given information and this thing we have to prove, but this is a main given information, main given information D1 and D2 are equivalent matrix. So here we have to use the given thing, given thing is D1 and D2 are equivalent matrix. Every D1 open ball contains D2 open ball, every D2 open ball contains D1 open ball, getting the point. So that means at any cost, we have to generate some D1 open ball or D2 open ball and we have to use the given thing. So right now we have one epsilon. So I'm going to consider one D2 open ball. Consider a D2 open ball. Okay, so my ball will be like this ball with center P. Point P already we have, let us use and radius is required. So I'm taking this epsilon as a radius of that ball and this is D2 open ball. So to denote it, I'm writing D2 here, right? So this is the uh, thing we have assumed. Let us go further. So now uh, I'm going to use the given information and which is so much important information that is D1 and D2 are equivalent matrix. So right now we have D2 open ball. Let us use by using this information, we can say it contains some D1 open ball. Let me write, we have D1 and D2 are equivalent matrix. These are equivalent matrix. So by definition of equivalent matrix, we can say this D2 open ball contains some D1 open ball. Let me show in this diagram. So let me remove this one. Okay, uh, this is a matrix space XD we have, this is matrix space XD, we have some D1 open, D2 open ball with center P and radius epsilon, this is D2 open ball, but matrix are equivalent, so we can find some delta greater than 0 such that 1 D1 open ball with center P radius delta subset of D2 open ball with center P radius epsilon. Getting? So matrix are equivalent. So this D2 open ball contains some D1 open ball. Getting? With radius delta and the same center P. Okay. So this is so much important thing. 
let me call it as one okay so diagram is not required now <coughs> just a minute let me remove this diagram okay okay see uh, as well as this is also given information xn converges to p so let us use that information also also we have xn converges to p in x d1 okay i hope all of you are familiar with con definition of convergent sequence uh, let me tell you once again when we say the xn converges to p for given epsilon greater than 0 there exists natural number n such that d of xn p less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to capital n so the same definition i'm going to use but instead of epsilon i'm going to use this delta it is also positive so definitely we can use so therefore for above delta greater than 0 okay i'm using the definition of convergent sequence right and generally we take epsilon there but right now we have delta so i'm going to use delta there exist n belongs to set of natural number such that such that say sequence converges to p in this matrix d1 so i should write d1 xn p less than delta for all n greater than or equal to capital n right uh, see there is no more space to write so make a screenshot of it first then i will go further okay see what we have got we have got distance between x n and p is less than delta that means if you consider point p radius delta and if you draw ball distance between xn and p less than radius delta that means xn will lie inside the ball this is a common sense if the distance is less than the radius point lies inside a ball and distance from center is greater than radius then point lies outside a ball so we have distance less than delta so that xn will lie inside a ball with center p you can see here and radius delta so all these things are talking about metric d1 so i should mention d1 here and obviously that condition we need to carry that is n greater than or equal to capital n right this is 2 so tell me what can we conclude from 1 and 2 can you guess see same ball is here same ball is here xn belongs to this ball but this ball is subset of that ball what i want to say xn belongs to one ball bd1 uh, but bd1 is subset of second ball bd2 so we can say xn belongs to bd2 right so by from 1 and 2 from 1 and 2 we can say xn belongs to ball d2 p uh, uh, d2 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 getting p epsilon i should carry the condition for all n greater than or equal to capital n okay so xn belongs to ball that means its distance from the center is less than its radius it's obvious thing if point lies inside a ball its distance from the center is less than its radius for all n greater than or equal to capital n so this is definition of convergent sequence so therefore we can say xn converges to p but where in x d2 since right now we have a metric d2 so in this way we proved if xn converges to p in x d1 we proved that xn converges to p in x d2 now we have to prove in a reverse way that means we have to assume xn converges to p in x d2 and we have to prove xn converges to p in x d1 so the second part is very obvious getting second part if xn converges to p in x d2 we have to prove xn converges to p in x d1 okay so i'm giving this second part as an exercise for you you can try at your own otherwise i will tell you the technique also simply replace d1 by d2 and d2 by d1 everywhere here so you will get automatically that proof getting so try for that second half and if you have any difficulty then write to me okay so we'll stop here. Thank you. See you.